Okay, so the the role of vitamin D in people is at one from one perspective to regulate calcium metabolism, um, but it does a lot of other things, and that's what's gotten people more interested in it. So the the way I use an analogy with regard to the role of vitamin D in health is to imagine the role of paper where you work. Because um, paper by itself doesn't do anything. Um, you use paper to write messages and that's how you communicate. And in human health, your body uses vitamin D in order to change it so that you can signal different tissues throughout your body to do things. So take the converse. If, let's say, your management were to say, you know, we've got a budget problem, we're going to cut back on paper. This year you can only use one-tenth the paper that you did last year. So the hospital has to do without paper. That means that um, at some point, somewhere, next year, somebody may not get the important memo that they were supposed to get or put up the right sign. and You start having mistakes because, like paper, vitamin D is simply... a a tool that you need in order to communicate and if you don't have the right tools for your body to communicate mistakes will happen within your body like cells can become cancerous um, you may not be able to regular regulate bone metabolism properly you know things like that you just basically you need vitamin D in order to allow the cells in your body to talk to each other properly Okay, the supply of vitamin D, um, you know, our human evolution is one that I like to think about in the context of vitamin D because it's made in your skin naturally when your skin is exposed to sunshine. So, essentially when you have summertime sunshine, when the sun is higher than 45 degrees above the horizon, that's when you can make vitamin D. And as the sun sets in the sky, once it's lower than 45 degrees, i.e., once your shadow is longer than you are tall, then you're not able to make vitamin D anymore. And you go through a relative period of months where you go progressively less and less vitamin D. You know, by itself that may not be a big issue, but it'll, you know, it can eventually cause a problem. Um, with regard to diet, um, yes, you can get vitamin D from the foods that you eat, but Northern individuals like in previous centuries and millennia when they migrated northward they tended to be coastal people and eat fish. You know, people never lived in the middle of Baffin Island, they'd live on the coast of Baffin Island and what would they eat? They'd eat a lot of fish, which is a relatively rich uh, food for vitamin D, but how much fish did they eat? Probably a pound of fish a day, right? How much fish do you eat? Do you eat a pound a day? We don't do that. So. Um, Yes, you can do perfectly well with vitamin D from the food, but you'd need a lot of the right kind of food. And we really don't get very much from food anymore, even if it's fortified. Like a pound of fish can have a couple of thousand units of vitamin D, which is pretty good. But if you start thinking about a quart of milk or a multivitamin, it's a 400 units of vitamin D. In the context of being out in the sun, you know, on a summer day, uh, or if you go to a suntan parlor, basically, you know, 10 to 20 minutes for a white person like me, in the sun, lying flat, uh, gives you about 10,000 units of this stuff. So if you start saying, well, gee, I'm going to drink a glass of milk and get 100 units, I go, whoopee, it doesn't help much. Did you know that normally, you know, dietary guidelines do not encourage taking a supplement? You're supposed to get all your diet from food. But once you hit age 50, all Canadians over age 50 are supposed to be taking a vitamin D supplement because it is known that Canadian foods do not contain the 400 units that's recommended for an adult over age 50. So it's the only nutrient where you've got official government policy saying take a supplement. For vitamin D, the recommended dose is kind of a guesstimate because people didn't know exactly how much you had to give them. So for infants, it's, um, well, pediatric societies recommend 400 units per day. For everybody else from, you know, little child onwards, up to age 50, they recommend 200 units a day. And beyond age 50, it's 400, and then it goes up to 800 when you're really old, i.e. over 70. 
um, problem. Those amounts that are recommended are so small it's almost impossible to tell that people are taking them. The correct recommendation of those is the one for babies, like the teaspoonful of cod liver oil that they used in the 1700s to help infants thrive in northern countries is about 400 units per day. It's designed for a baby. 2,000 units is the upper level, it's the safe upper level. But saying um, that is like saying, well, you, you know, you're on the beach, your water is maybe up to your knees. You take another step, we can't get to guarantee your safety. And by the way, the natural amount you make in sunshine is 10,000 units, but don't take more than 2,000. We approached people that had their vitamin Ds tested in the summertime, but that had low blood vitamin D levels. And we gave them either the official amount recommended by Health Canada, 600 units per day for older adults, or we gave them 4,000 units of vitamin D daily. And we started this um, in November in anticipation of February because everybody gets the February blahs, right? People are depressed and feeling sick. So we gave a well-being questionnaire, which are the classic depression questions, basically, are you having problems sleeping? Are you having pleasure in life? Are you having problems concentrating? Are you eating too much or too little? That sort of thing. And lo and behold, the group that was getting the 4,000 units of vitamin D felt better come February than the ones who were getting the 600 units. And that was a blinded, randomized trial. Like, they didn't know what dose they were getting, but the higher dose did better. And we've done that here. That's one of them. Subsequently, um, some Scandinavian researchers gave uh, also 4,000 units of vitamin D or placebo. And they gave it to obese people who were depressed and did, the, again, something called the Beck Depression Scale and found, again, higher dose of vitamin D, less depressed. So those are, those are cool. Like you say, well, what's vitamin D good for? Yeah, you need it for bones, etc. maybe cancer or something. But one thing that's overlooked is how do you feel? And people with higher levels feel better, usually.